you do still take a very active interest in young designers. I know you were on Project Runway. Yes. As a guest yes. judge. Yes, and I, I work with schools and uh, design schools. Right, because you, you do a great project with one of the schools, the Otis. Uh, yes, Otis, uh, or Otis Fashion School. Mm -hmm. It's just fantastic. And, and they're, they're such a good school that when, you, when I go in there and work with them, it's, uh, it's so rewarding for me. I mean, I, I get ideas from them, and I kind of head them in the right direction because I'm asking them to do things they've never even thought of doing before. And wow. all of a sudden, they have to think a different way, but they also have to make it, which is, is so, really something. So the process that you... Tell us a little bit about the, the whole project that you do with them. How does that work? Well, I usually come up with some kind of fantasy assignment, and it's usually connected either to evening wear or, or fantasy kind of costumes. And, and I, I give them a lot of uh, research on, on the period or the time or the, or the mood, and, uh, and they just look at it. And then I come back in a few weeks, and they show me you know, 50 sketches a piece. And, wow. and they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. The hard part is getting it down to one outfit per student. And we usually have about 25 students. Wow. So it's very exciting. And then they have a huge fashion show where they invite all the best you know, manufacturers in, in, the, in Los Angeles and, and the country, actually. And it's pretty, pretty impressive. That sounds amazing. Yeah. The kind of, it's a kind of project that you never forget you've done. Right. You know, and, and I, I don't want it to be boring. No, I don't think it would be boring. No. And when you're talking about fantasy sequences and, and kind of dreamland looks, your yeah. first big project with that was the Alice. Alice Through the Looking Glass, right. right. Yes, I, I was, I don't know, 26 or something, and I was doing this huge television special with all these stars in it. And it was all Alice Through the Looking Glass, but kind of a, a, a take on the original, not exactly the same. And uh, from that... Uh, I, I, I received an Emmy, and the first one they've ever given to costume designers at the time. They never thought, they thought everybody brought in their own clothes. I don't know what they were thinking. You know, it was just one more category they didn't want to be bothered with, but they couldn't <laughs> ignore it. What? You know, because that's amazing. That was your first time with a fantasy kind of feel. Right. And you won an Emmy for it. That's I, amazing. I know. But they didn't have Emmys for costumes. <laughs> like they created an they, Emmy they for it. They created it, which was really, <laughs> you know, kind of interesting. How many costumes did you do for that? I don't even know. Probably about a hundred or so. How long do you get to work on that? Well, yeah, I, we had a few weeks, three or four weeks. Oh, no yeah, more. plenty of time. No more. Yeah, no. It's you, you in television. You know, it's like bang, 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 done. Right. But we had amazing crews, and they got on. You know, when you're doing weekly shows, variety shows, we had people that just got on such a roll. You know, you know how it is. You yeah. do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> but not with all the sequins. No. Which there is a bummer, but we could online. add. This we could was, add a few. We had flower. We had people dressed as flowers and horses, and and, and the you know, Jabberwocky. And, and ja we had the ja Jack Palance was the Jabberwocky. He would scare me. He was scary, and he got a little scary late at night <laughs> when he got really nervous in his wings and his things, and he, you know, I just stayed away from him. <laughs> <laughs> scared of your own creation? Well, I was scared of Jack Palance. <laughs> <laughs> he can do one-arm push-ups, you know. I know, I know, and he could yeah. do more in 1967. <laughs> So when you're designing something as amazing and far out as you've done for Cher, right. which, by the way, fantastic, <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> did you do her Turn Back Time video? Oh, you had costume? to ask me that, didn't you? <laughs> you know, I went, the, the Turn Back Time, if, you don't, if people don't remember. Oh, I think they do. Um, it was when she was on the battleship with all those young sailors, and there she was with her whole backside hanging out. It made uh, quite an impression. Tattoos on, and all. Yeah. And, and she... She actually was going to wear it. She wore the outfit with a leather jacket. But she was going to wear it without the leather jacket. And it, it was like bicycle pants sheer all the way up to wherever. And, and uh, you know, it, 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 it was terrifying. And I said to her, I said, I don't think you should wear it. This is not working. It was something she wanted, kind of, and I went with her on it. And so she put the jacket on. Well, when she got the jacket on, you couldn't see any of the outfit except this little tiny strip right <laughs> down the middle. Well, I mean, you know, it looked like dental floss. And it was just, like, horrifying. So there she is out in front of, you know, 2,000 sailors doing this number. You know, she's old enough to be their mother. And uh, it was just hor. And I denied for years that I had anything to do with that outfit. I was so, Sorry. so horrified. You didn't realize that. <laughs> 
Anyway. But she still looked amazing. Well, she looked amazing. Say. She looked amazing. And maybe today we wouldn't think it was anything. You know what? But I think we would. <laughs> We might still, yeah. I think it still would have made an impression, but I, even more so then, I'm sure. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously with Cher, you've done some some far out amazing Way, things. And know, then it was all about exposing one body part and then another body part and then this and then that. After a while, it just got, now what are we going to show? You right. Know, there wasn't anything left. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how does what you learned doing far out things for Cher have any impact on what you do doing things that we wear that we buy on QVC? <laughs> well, they're not exactly the same. No. <laughs> and, they, and they have a different There's more end. fabric on You know, I end. keep talking about comfort and modern dressing and ease. Uh, none of those are comfortable to wear to any affair. Let's put it that so way. So she doesn't lounge around at home? No. In those? No, no. 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 Okay. But the thing you have to do when you're a costume designer and also you're dressing, you're dressing uh, performers that, that are out there under their own name. They're not playing a character even though they've developed a character that is them. Right. You know, you have to make them look like the audience wants them to look, but they also have to look amazing. You know, and Margaret, when I first met her, was very shy and kind of uh, modest, but she'd always play these wild, sexy, uh, crazy kitten with a whip parts. And I was, you know, kind of undoing it. You, ha you have to kind of ease her into, you know, like showing a high leg line or a low neck. And, uh, but once she gets on stage, she's like this wild tigress. But you have to make sure it all looks good on the person. You know, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the, the bottom line. You can't just do something crazy on somebody, whether it looks good or not. And a lot of young designers tend to design something and say, this is it, and make it. And they don't really look at the person or right. understand or look at the person before and say, well, I have to kind of cover that and fix that, but this is good. Let's show that and let's make that and push those up. And, right. and you know, it's all, it's like a science. Because and, 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 you know, designing for, for, you know, the American public to wear at, at all size, you know, we, we design from extra small to 3X here at QVC and uh, it's not that easy. No. It's, it's not that easy, but, but it's very rewarding. And you've, you definitely have had a lot of challenges in making costumes for celebrities. I mean, you were saying um, Judy Garland had a figure that would have been almost impossible for her to just go out and buy great fitting clothes off the rack. Very rock. hard. She was four foot eleven to start with, had long, long legs and a short, short waist and a full bosom. Well, that's not easy. You, you couldn't buy clothes for her today in the stores unless it was a big T-shirt or something that, you know, stretch. Right. Like RuPaul says, when I ask him what size dress he wore, he says, stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the celebrities that you worked with, you had to dress them when they were pregnant and didn't want anyone to know they were pregnant Well, that yet. works for a while. And then after a while, you know, you right. just said, well, everybody knows. But you can cover it up. And it was easy in the 60s when kind of A-line dresses and those kind of things were, were popular. But uh, it gets harder and harder. First, they start out... Uh, looking extra bosomy, like Sophia Loren, you know. Right. And they say, oh, this looks really good. Then a couple, you know, a few weeks later, you're going, oh, now what do I do with the middle part? And uh, it, I've had to do that with several performers. And so you, it's good in the beginning. There was uh, the character of Mama. How did you compensate when? Well, Vicky was pregnant. And, and uh, Vicky it was a matronly, you know, character. She had a full bosom and kind of went straight down and wore a house dress and a funny gray wig. It was sort of a takeoff on her, her ex-mother-in-law. <laughs> it's true. That's just and, not nice. <laughs> no, it wasn't nice, but it's true. Uh, and as she got bigger, you know, here, I just kept patting her bosom out so her bosom would be bigger than her stomach. So it, it worked. And she wore, she played mama probably until she was like eight months pregnant. Wow. And nobody ever thought about it one way or another. So you've had really a lot of experience in dressing every different figure, every different height, every different oh, shape, yeah, every absolutely. different. Absolutely. You know, men, women, dogs, <laughs> <laughs> chimpanzees, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> People ask chimpanzees. No. No. <laughs> no. It's good that you drew the line somewhere, Bob. Well, I did draw the line, yes. I mean, I, you know, you're just there. You're ready. You, you solve the problems. 